Worm is a web serial by J.C. McRae, also known as Wildbow. You can read Worm in its original format by visiting parahumans.wordpress.com or donate to Wildbow's Patreon at patreon.com slash wildbow. This story isn't intended for young or sensitive readers. Readers who are on the lookout for trigger warnings are advised to give Worm a pass. For a complete list, check the description for all of Worm's trigger warnings. Welcome back to Dissecting Worm, first episode of season four. My Take God, you worms. Take that, you worms. They said it couldn't be done. The worms said it couldn't be done. You take that, <laughs> you worms. Welcome, Alan. Welcome, Michael, as always. Thank, Thank you. Welcome, my me. lovely listeners. And all of our, all of our lovely listeners. Special, special most welcome lovely. to our, yeah, I was going to say, special, most lovely listeners, our beautiful Patreons, pa- patrons on Patreon. That's how you do it. Thank yes. you so much. All Means of you are lovely, but some of you are more lovely than others. Yeah. <laughs> what's, the, what's the Arrested Development meme? I love all my children equally. Mm-hmm. And if, earlier that day, I don't, I don't care for much, Joe. I don't care for yeah, much, much for that Joe. <laughs> oh, Joe I, love yeah, all my, I love all our listeners equally. I don't care for the non-patrons. <laughs> 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 Kidding. Uh, I love you all. Thank you for can listening. Can we believe it's season three? Season, season four. Thank you very much. I, uh, we're, can we believe we're, it's season four? <laughs> <laughs> Fix that in post. Editing magic. <laughs> uh, movie magic. Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, 20 episodes four. of this. I know. A lot of short one. If we're counting yeah, 20, 20 arcs that we've been doing. Yeah. A lot more yeah. than 20 episodes. We're in arc, so. Yeah, we're in arc 20. Short arc. Going to be a short episode most likely uh, because it's pretty good. And oh, yeah. uh, Alan and I, we haven't really talked too much about it, but I, I feel like this works pretty well as is, as a pilot, or not a pilot, but a, a first episode, season opener. I think it has a nice build. It's got an, a, I mean, a few things to tweak, perhaps, but overall, I really the like the pacing. It sets the tone. It sets the conflict of the season right off the bat. Is, is Taylor being outed as, a, as a, uh, her identity? Um, you've got, you, you're bringing back the fan favorites. You've got Arms Master and Dragon back in the fold. Hey. Wards are present. You got a new angry director. Uh, yeah, all sorts of stuff. So let's, let's dive into it a bit, but uh, it's pretty, pretty cut and dry. I like this one. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Overall, I'd, I'd, I'd just keep everything and then maybe bump the chord interlude to the opening. Maybe not the cold open, but just the beginning scene of the next episode. Yeah. I think that could, think that could work. Um, the couple things that would need to be slightly tweaked. Uh, one is I think we rework uh, Greg <laughs> and mm-hmm. his him being the reason Taylor goes back to the school. Um, that's the only thing I, th- I think you could slightly reword, rework that so that it's a bit more believable just because the audience hasn't seen Greg since literally episode two or one, you know, of the whole show. Yeah. Um, So it's kind of, it's kind of a deep pull to, to grab him here and put him kind of front and center for a minute. Um, I think we could probably find a better reason to get Taylor to the school. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a, I think it's a, an easy enough reason that like, and it does kind of hint at like, hey, I figured this out. Other people probably can too. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, we could we could keep the reason, but maybe just change, uh, you know, maybe just change up how it's presented. Just something so it's a little bit, a little bit easier for the audience to to grasp. Yeah, I, I think literally you just have you, you skip introducing Greg, and you mm-hmm. just have the, oh my gosh, like. I mean, you could even have that as a cold open. Um, mm-hmm. He's in his room, chatting on stuff, sees a bunch of things, puts two and two together. Like, sees, you know, has a school schedule thing up, you know, going to school again. Mm-hmm. Looks at a picture of the undersiders, you know, looks back at his school yearbook, looks back and goes like, what the fuck? And then, you know, title. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that works. The only issue is that it's not really a plot point beyond just getting Taylor to the school. Because then after that, it doesn't matter anymore. So it's... I, I, you know, I don't hate it, though. I think maybe if you do it, maybe you just... You know, maybe to make it a bit more urgent, you just rope in another, another classmate or two. Maybe it's just a small group of them. Maybe Charlotte catches wind of it. And, and you know, that's what... She's like, hey, there's a rumor going around. Now, I don't know. I'm kind of talking myself out of that now. I don't want it to be too, yeah. Yeah. too broad. Um, I don't know. I feel like it would just be, it'd just be a little odd to, to bring Greg back for this. Yeah. From, uh, know, I mean, okay, so let's, let's, talk, let's talk alternative. Because mm-hmm. the big thing is like Taylor's basically like, why the hell would I go back to school? Yeah. Um, you know, as opposed to for some reason, her being like, I know I've got to stick it out. Uh, we'll just, we'll, we'll come up with the reasoning behind it, but she goes to the school like everybody else, maybe more so to just check things out. Kind of. Mm-hmm. Um, and while she's there, maybe Dennis puts it together. You have to remind me who Dennis is clock blocker. Oh, clock blocker. He already bumps into her in the hallway. So yeah. like what's what's to say that he isn't the one that kind of is there when Emma and uh Emma and her have their fight. He's kind of witness to it. He goes and gets the security guard who like, you know, everything goes down the same, but he's in there and he's like I saw her, you know, do the thing. But he mm-hmm. is just like dogging Taylor the whole time. And you can tell, like, he he isn't a hundred percent sure, but there's like he can just tell the vibe. You know, he's been up close, mm-hmm. especially because she's so much more cocky. Yeah, uh, not cocky, but you know, confident and mm-hmm. and and menacing almost. Like when she comes out of the principal's office, he like says something, and she's she basically denies it. And it's like, hey, like you don't know what you're talking about, like, yeah. And and she doesn't know who he is, so she's like, hey, you know, you don't know what you're talking about. Why the hell would you? Yada yada yada. And maybe that's the tip off. Like she goes, she goes to the room, and Clockblocker's like this motherfucking bitch, and he calls, like he calls in, to like I'm pretty sure Skitters here at the school. He doesn't out her, but he doesn't need to because. What's her, you know, dragon knows who it is. I, I, I like that, but I, I think, I think it'd be, I actually like that a lot, but, um, maybe just have him not and like not reach out to anybody. Like he's, he, he gets this suspicion for whatever, you know, he just sort of has like a little moment where he's like, okay, I, you know, this seems familiar. He's putting two and two together. And then when he's convinced, Maybe he starts to reach out. Maybe he, you know, calls the weld or something like that. Mm. And weld's like, uh, yeah, it's something to the effect of, you know, we already know we're on our way, yada yada. And at that moment is when shit goes down. Yeah, um, something like that. I, I would. It would be interesting to have a, a humanizing moment between the two of them, where like he stop, he sees her, you know, essentially get attacked by this bully, mm-hmm. and you know, he he reports it, and then in the middle of her like him kind of seeing this, like he does realize like, I think that's Skitter, just the hair and everything fits. And then he mm-hmm. waits for her outside the principal's office. She leaves and he like kind of corners her in the hallway 
And we have very much her, you know, having her like, fuck off. Like, you don't know who I am. I don't know who the fuck you are. You can fuck off. And he's like, look, I could figure it out. Other people can too. And she goes, look, I don't tell everybody your secret identity, you know? Mm -hmm. So don't go blabbing mine. And he's like all, uh, 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 what do you mean? She's like, yeah, shut the fuck up, clock boy. Like, you you Uh, little pocket watch. (laughs) That's funny. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know if I love them figuring out each other's identities. I I mean, it it would be, I, I would think that she'd figure it out just because like Lisa maybe told her or I mean she yeah I do, she doesn't I know exactly who it is but she she very quickly identifies them in it, it, as soon as they the stuff shits goes down and they go to get their costumes she's like oh there they are yeah well yeah I mean I, I just think it's it's one of those things where it's sort of undermines that sort of the key principle in worm which is a little suspension of disbelief for sure but it's the, the how important your identity is um, yeah, well, I think I think that's, you know, could make a case for why that is uh, interesting here, because we are talking about cases of identity and exploring like, yeah, no, they're really fragile and it is kind of a facade like, mm-hmm. um, it, you know, we knew from earlier whether we showed that or not that like it takes dragon all of five seconds to find out who Skitter is. Yeah, she doesn't yeah. say anything. And truthfully, anybody with like a good enough, uh, 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 you know, anybody who takes two glances at Taylor goes, "Wow, she's got you know big curly hair," you know, uh, is probably in high school. Let's just open one of our two high school yearbooks that we have around here, <laughs> right? Because there's only two schools. Yeah. So like this is going to be real easy to figure out unless she's like weirdly homeschooled for some reason. Like, yeah. At the, yeah. At the same time, not though, that hard. It, it has to be like something fairly Im- like this. Ha- this would have to be a fairly important moment that we somehow touched on again later. I think. I feel like this is a big deal. Someone finding out your identity. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, oh, and yeah. I mean the next yeah, couple yeah. of episodes would would essentially be like. Hey, what happens when your identity gets outed? What, you know, what are the ramifications and why, like mm-hmm. why it's super important? Why, you know, what are you protecting with your identity? Because it's yeah. not always just yourself. You're not, you're not protecting you necessarily. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the stereotype for a lot of like, I don't wear this to protect me. I wear this to protect the ones I love. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. Taylor's, yeah, Taylor's very upfront about that where, you know, she the only thing she really has to protect is her father, is Danny. Like that's about it. She doesn't have anything else worth protecting with her identity. Um, so you know, that's it means obviously it's a it's a good thing to protect, but that's all that she really has. I I like the idea. I do like the idea of Clockblocker being more involved in the episode early on. I like him being witness. I wouldn't want to have him maybe intervene in the fight because I don't want to take away from Taylor and Emma, but maybe have him be one of the witnesses that gets called in, you know, who was present there. Uh, and he defends Taylor. I really like that. And I like him maybe putting enough together where he's like, okay, this seems very likely. I need to let my captain know. And then lo and behold, they already know. And Yeah, they're, they're, they're already there. on their way. Yeah. Like, yeah. And that's where she, the principal, like, comes down the hall as he's, like, rounding the corner to make the call. They're already on their way. The principal rounds the corner and, like, gives Taylor the nod and is like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, I do like that. Um, I do like that a lot. Uh, So, Uh, the one other, because I do think it'd probably be worth cutting to a couple other scenes in the first episode. And I'll save some room in case we want to come back to anything, because... To be totally honest, the next probably five or six arcs I'm pretty shaky on, so I'm excited to reread them. Um, mm-hmm. But I, w- it would probably be prudent to introduce Tag at this point if we do want to yes. keep Tag. Yes, um, I think having worth having him be introduced and maybe having the argument with uh, 
uh, a pre-argued argument as opposed to our post-issue argument um, <laughs> with Dragon and Defiant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think it'd be good to show that. Um, one, to really help just set his character up uh, a bit. He's such a different director from uh, Pigo. So yeah. I think it'd be be helpful on that. I mean, front. you could even do like the the him having his lovely suburban family, you know, mm-hmm. moved in, and you know his daughters and yada yada yada. Mm-hmm. And then he goes to work and is an absolute bastard. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, that'd be a fun way to open the episode. Talking about cold opens, that'd be yeah. a fun way to open it. Is start on oh, him. Yeah. You do the whole, do that whole thing. Do like just the the fake American dream lifestyle. The facade that he puts on, let's have him going about his day, getting into the office, and then just like this complete change of expression. And he's just brutal. Yeah. That'd be sick. Time, all right. Time to kill the kid. Like, just, just goes for it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Just <laughs> why haven't we killed them yet? Yeah. Um, I like it. That's good. Yeah. Uh, pff. You do a lot here. Uh, conversation with Charlotte. You got the big moment. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, there's great moments. There's the. I mean, her and Danny in the beginning is great. Very nice. Um, yeah, conversation with Charlotte. Uh, the confrontation with Emma will be a nice highlight. Yeah. Um, but I, I think there's enough to really stretch this. I think there's a lot here. Especially, you can draw out the... The heroes arriving and and and, know, and the, the end. You could switch between fight scenes, even though it's just Taylor. Each one of her little bug clones slash yeah. bugs swarms are fighting a different hero. Yeah, and she whoops their ass. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, so Clock Blocker goes downstairs to get his suit on or whatever, and instantly just gets you know rolled up and shoved in a closet or something. I like. <laughs> I love the idea of clock blocker, exactly like you're saying, just running down the stairs. He does the whole Superman reveal, right? Where he pulls off his like school uniform, clock blocker uniform underneath. Looks like it's about to be epic and then just gets just tripped up and demolished yep. and covered. Literally in trips on the floor, webbed. And yeah. he's like, not again, not again. <laughs> yeah. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> not the nose. Just like four million slugs just come out of his locker. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, he just can't great. stand up. I heard you like <laughs> bugs. So we got bugs on bugs. Um, yeah, uh, that's, that's honestly it about but what I have uh, for the episode itself. Truly, which yeah, I'm not going to cut the episode this short. So uh, perhaps we no. Let, let's just talk about future. Yeah, the, the, the future of the season. That's kind so, of what I was thinking. Identity, obviously, a big theme that we'll be going with. Yeah. Um, and the actual identities being the mo- motif used. Um, I ah. So the, the process here is season four is going to be the transfer from Taylor being a bad guy to Taylor working with the good guys leading right. up for the ultimate season, you know, five. Yeah. Uh, I think this, this ends with what? 20. Five, I guess. I, I was, yeah, I think 25 would be a good ending. Again, I'm pretty shaky on the full contents of each of these arcs, so it's wouldn't be surprised if we rearrange that a bit. But just kind of in, in the brief skimming, I, I feel like it makes sense to go through 25. You get a yeah. really nice climactic fight there with Behemoth. Um, kind of a, a big moment there. And then it ends kind of on a downturn right before the Slaughterhouse 9000. Yeah. So a lot of this isn't even a big fight. It's more of the building, uh, building connections mm-hmm. and yeah. Yeah. Uh, building connections, losing connections, change of mm-hmm. job, proving herself again. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just, I think we'll have, uh, you know, I know that we have the time skip, but I don't actually think, I think if we play our cards right here, I think we just roll into 
there's no time skip. We just roll to the next thing. Uh, 100%. Yeah. And I think we'll, we'll probably get there. But I have a feeling that... I don't know if that's going to be a controversial take or not. I know a lot of fans don't like the time skip. I'm one of them. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't I, care for it. I, well, I don't know why. Could, would you mind... Like, like just, when you, okay, because I feel like part of this is when you say the time skip, are you talking about the device of the time skipping, or are we talking about like the actual, the, I don't know, yes, the, the arc? Oh, no, the arc. I mean, the arc is fine. It's, I actually really like the, the, the contents of the, the chapters. I don't think, I think time skipping is really hard to pull off well without just interrupting the plot of the story. Like, if you're going to skip forward in time, my question is why? Like, what what are you, what what needs to be skipped? Like, why skip over that stuff? Why are you trying to jump ahead? Is that just not interesting story? Are you trying to just get to the action? That kind of thing. And obviously, in this case, we have a prophecy we're trying to get to, but there's no need for there to be a a jump in time there. There's, it just doesn't benefit the story. It doesn't add anything. It just, yeah. just kind of, when you, when you introduce time skips, you're introducing, like your character obviously has to be different two years in the future than they are now because it's got to feel like time has passed. But if your character changes, the audience doesn't wait for two years to watch a character develop. They just see an instantaneous transformation so the character also can't really change because you don't want to throw your audience off. It just gets really... It's, it's really hard to write. I, I can't think of a time skip that I have liked in any show, story, anything like that. Um, mm. Just not a fan of them in general. I can't think of one that's done well. I, I, I'm, I'll be honest. I'm trying to think of time skips, period. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the only thing I can think of is Fire Emblem Three Houses. <laughs> and and I'll be honest, the writing's already kind of uh, bad there. So um, let's actually let's do a quick Google search: popular time skips in movies. I'm, or, I'm almost certain there's a couple books where the time skipping happens, like at the beginning. It, yeah, and it is easier to do in book form. Okay, uh, actually, perfect example for a recent film, really good movie, but Endgame. Right, Endgame has like a five-year time skip from the beginning of Endgame to mm, when they yep. go when they go decide to do something. Um, I, I mean, I'm, I'm very okay with it. I just wish, yeah, yeah. No, I like that. So here's the thing: the time skip in Endgame only exists so that Tony Stark can get five years of happiness before he dies. Spoilers for Endgame. <laughs> That is why yeah. it exists. That's the only reason it exists. You take that away and you can completely remove the time skip. I don't mind the bit of happiness because I like that Tony gets to be happy for a bit. And I'll be honest, little... I forgot Tony Stark existed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, okay. it's, pretty, it's pretty popular. Yeah, I um, uh, like, well, I mean, Tony Stark, not Iron Man. Like, <laughs> yeah. like him living his, you know, do nothing life. Um, I just, yeah, for me, time skips aren't, they, they are a time to explore what has happened in the meantime. So I do agree with you there. Like, it's almost like setting up a mystery or trying to find what has changed. Like you mm-hmm. as the viewer. Um, and I'll use Three Houses at the, as the example. Um, so uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses, uh, We'll ignore how bad the writing is, but essentially <laughs> you are, you know, at war, you have all these students, uh, and then the time skip happens, you're gone for five years, you come back, they're all five years older, you haven't aged. Um, in that time, a lot of them have had issues that they were, when they were younger, were things that you kind of helped them work through. So mm-hmm. now that they're older, they have overcome a lot of those or have, you know, grown into themselves, if you will. Uh, so it's very fun to be like, oh, now that I've done and I've had all the conversations with them there, I see how they turned out when they're older. 
and what problems they're dealing with now that they're older. Some of that mm-hmm. is also literally aesthetic. Like, oh man, I can't wait to see how so-and-so has grown up and what their haircut looks like. Like, how are they going to be an edgy older person now? Or are they going to be like more domestic because they've mellowed out? Like what is, what are they going to be like? And playing that like guessing game as you're waiting to find out what, you know, what has happened in these five years to the person, um, mm-hmm. I think is a fun and interesting device to use. Um, and, and part of that, you know, that's why I like uh, what they did for Endgame. It's like, oh, uh, we're going to see what all these characters essentially look like with new haircuts, outfits, yada, yada, yada. That's mm-hmm. very shallow. I get that. <laughs> I find it like I find it entertaining. It is fun for me to see that. Um, and I'll be honest, because of how like... L- I don't know how little the time skip affects the rest of the plot, I also think that that could be, yeah, like, it barely affects it, but also isn't that an easy way to justify it, that it barely does anything? So, like, if it's barely doing anything other than aesthetic, like, I don't know. I could could make a case that, like, I barely need to make a case for something that barely matters. Yeah, I mean, you could just argue that both ways, you know, if it barely matters, then why include it? I mean, it's a it's a device. It's a storytelling device, and and if you're going to use it like any storytelling device, I think you've got to justify using it. I think, uh, you know, uh, a, a cross dissolve screen wipe transition is a little Final Cut Pro. If I saw that in a professional film, <laughs> I'd be like, why? What the heck? But if you're directing a Star Wars film and you use it, I go, ah, that feels nostalgic. I love that. Right. Yeah. So there's like every tool has a purpose. I'll give one I, example yeah. of a really good time skip that I loved because I did think of one. And that's with Lost. So spoilers for Lost. Uh, there's a b- brilliant time skip in season four or five. I can't remember. Um, it's where the whole, the famous Lost line, we have to go back. Right. Because yep. you're the entire show, you've been watching flashbacks of their lives beforehand. And you've been watching flashbacks this whole season. Uh, and you think they're flashbacks. And then at the very end, he says, we have to go back. And you realize that this has been time skipped to the future. And you've been watching future events after they got off the island. And you go, oh my God, what the fuck? And it's brilliantly done. And that's, in my, a, like, that's a good use of a time skip, in my opinion. Yeah. Where you're showing you know, afterwards. Yeah, it's um, a season I, three finale. Just, season mm-hmm. three, thank you. Season three. You I go. think, yeah. I think, two things. One, time skips are only upsetting, probably if they aren't used, if they're weighted to like the beginning. Like you have your your like moment, something tragic happens, and then we cut to twenty years in the future. Mm-hmm. Like you have that. I mean, Batman. Almost every Batman thing has like, oh, there's a kid at the beginning and his parents get shot, right. blah, 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 <laughs> Batman, and then we skip, you know, right. 30 years in the future and now he's, you know, angry and alone. Um, but, I, I mean, I think that's where most of the time we see time skips. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I think if I had to put a finger on it, I'd be willing to bet that most people would not be upset with the time skip later on if it was shorter and happened a little more frequently before this. Because the timeline for Worm, as we've discussed, is absurd. (laughs) We are in what? Month three? Maybe. Of this book? So when you have something that skips so much, even though so much has happened so, you know, so little of a time, Mm-hmm. To now skip two years, which is, you know, multiple times that mm-hmm. feels odd. But at the same time, I don't think we need to sit here and like, sure, he could have written an entire two years of them prepping. But oh, given that right. we took that long to get through three months, like, I don't think it's worth it now. If we had done, oh, a month and then two months, you know, uh, uh, an arc, oh, and then two months passed, 
nobody would have paid attention to that. You do yeah. that 12 times in a row or something, you know, or you just do between our seasons, essentially, you know, oh, between the Slaughterhouse Nine and this arc. Oh, yeah, a couple of months passed. Oh, wow. You know, the story so far has taken place over a year and a half. How interesting. Mm -hmm. Then you get to, you know, not only is Taylor older by the time this happens, but then you get to the time skip. You only have to skip like, oh, we just have to skip six months. It's like, well, you know, easier to swallow. Yeah, it's easier to swallow. You just jump two months between every arc, and I don't think anybody but would have been that upset about having like, uh, oh, we've skipped two months here, two months there, and this is a longer six-month time skip. And you just mm-hmm. explain it with literally the characters come in like, man, it's been two months since this. That's wild. Oh, yeah, cool. And you go right back into your thing. Nothing's changed because the time skip wasn't so great. It was an acceptable period of time. Mm-hmm. Like, I'll say maybe any more than six months, and people probably feel weird about it. Mm-hmm. But to say like six months later, I don't think most people would have batted an eyelash at any of these starting. Like, you end Leviathan, and then season two is six months later, and it's still a shithole kind of that's getting worked on. Nobody would have batted an eyelash. Instead, we're like, right. and the next day, like, yeah. No, that's a good point. I like that. I also think hiding any sort of jumps uh, between seasons is obviously a lot easier um, because, mm-hmm. you you know, Stranger Things kind of does that where they have to deal with their cast literally aging up. So they got to yeah. be like, oh, <laughs> it's a year later because our cast is a year older. You know, yeah. obviously that kind of stuff you got to have to yeah. you have to work with. Also, um, as much as I love, you know, doing a, a yearly season to season, Who's to say that it wouldn't take two in time, like two actual years, real time for uh, for to go from season three to season four? Mm-hmm. Like, and and I get a lot of people would watch this in retrospect and be like, ah, yes, I've watched seasons one through three, and then, uh, you know, and four. And now I'm you know skipping over to five, and you know, there's a weird two year gap, and it's like, yeah, but you forgot that there were two year gaps between every one of those seasons, like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean it, it'll be a fun it'll be a fun challenge once we get there. I, I mean, how long is between arcane seasons right now? Yeah, what? 4 years. Close to it. Yeah. So, uh actually arcane, I did I did like the time skip in arcane. That did work too. That was a good one. Yeah. Forgot about that. Um, and, and that's one with it wall at the beginning, you know. It's not that at the beginning. You spend a, a you know full third of the thing yeah. going there, and y- honestly, you you probably you know I like it the way it is, but you could have done a whole you know two thirds and then skip, and then the last third is them hashing it out as adults. Mm-hmm. Um, that could have been very workable given how well they you know good they are at writing stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that's yeah, that's a good example. Um, and and that's another part of like why time skips are fun. Like, you get, what do they look like? Literally, what do they look like? What they when they are older? Oh, she's got tattoos now. That's cool. What does Echo look like when he's older? Oh, that's cool. Like, oh, who's who? Where are they? What are they doing now? Oh, the right. shitty guy's a sheriff. Like, wow. As long as there's a like, purpose to it, then it. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think device, that's maybe like more of my issue. Yeah, my issue with with Worm in particular, the time jumping Worm, is I don't really feel like there is much of a purpose beyond getting to the like you see Taylor in a new new place. Sure, fair enough. And again, the memories of these arcs are a bit fuzzy to me, so I'm happy to really excited yeah. to reread them. Um, but I don't really remember feeling like any of these characters grew at all over two years. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The, the only reason to speed it up was because you got to get to the uh, end of the world. Yeah, And uh, honestly, I think, I stand by this again, I think the time skip would have been fine if the rest of the arcs just took longer just took in longer. the world. Like, <laughs> if they just took a month at a time yeah, I don't think a you know a year time skip would have been that odd 
um, just to get us to the end of the world. Or, you know, t- t- just say, ah, the, I'm going to end the world. You got one year, kid, or something like that. Right, right. You know, and then we zoom it there. And obviously he was writing, you know, while Bill was writing this, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. we're just, try, you know, move into the next thing. You're moving very fast. And while he mm-hmm. did plan out very well, um, you know, you get to a point where you're like, I am about to move to the next section that I kind of have in my head. I'm not about to spend two years bullshitting till then. Mm-hmm. Like, we need to get there. We need to get there now. Um, you're right. Yeah. So, like, for me, once again, because I was separate from all of the 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 fan base, I was just, you know, reading alone in the mountains of West <laughs> Virginia with no internet uh, and everything on a Kindle that I got from town. Like, <laughs> I'm I'm just alone in the dark reading. I'm like, oh, yeah. And then they skipped. I'm like, just taking it at face value. Like, yeah, obviously. You just need to go to the, you need to hurry up and get to the end. I mean, I can, I can tell how far we are in the book. We don't have time. Bullshit for two years. Yeah. <laughs> so it it like it really never bothered me. And then, you know, when I come off the mountaintop and I'm like, hey guys, you seeing this? And they're like, the time skip fucking sucks. I was like, oh. Oh, there's a <laughs> lot of dislike for this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's always it's always everything subjective. I know there's like I said, it's I I know it's it's a it's one of those points of contention with the fan base in general. I think a lot of fans probably like you just aren't bothered by it or liked it or, you know, uh didn't carry their way, and then yeah. obviously others that didn't. Um, yeah, I'll tell so. I'll tell you what what has turned off a couple of my uh, big reader friends from finishing mm-hmm. Worm. Their complaint was after after Leviathan, nobody really dies, and mm-hmm. I like I get what they mean. They got to like they got to the behemoth. Regent dies, and he they was just like, eh, like. It's been so long. They really should have died. Like any of the undersiders should have died a long time ago. Mm-hmm. It's surprising that they've lasted. They've all lasted this long. Yeah. And so I was like, yeah, I was like, yeah. And, and you know what? I don't see it. Granted, you know, once again, I'm not looking all that hard, but I don't see people complain about that aspect all that much. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of people that stay alive for way longer than they probably should have. Yeah, I think uh, I think contrary to what what popular belief would have you think, most people don't really enjoy for most shows like the Game of Thrones. Keep everyone on their toes. Your favorite character could be dead in the next episode because, like, at the end of the day. We don't want our favorite character to die. Right? They're our favorite. Yeah, they're our favorite for a reason. Um, which, in my personal opinion, we'll see if George R. R. Martin ever decides to finish the books. But I'm pretty sure that's why the show was like, we got to bring Jon Snow back because we've killed off <sighs> too many favorite characters. So he's going to come back to life. I don't know. Just my my theory there. But it's funny because... I think people that read Worm get to the sense that that's going to be the case. So you start to sort of expect that and prepare your mind for that. Um, and then when it doesn't happen, then yes, it is disappointing because now you feel like you're not being rewarded for the effort you're putting into the story. But uh, it's not really that kind of story. And obviously characters do die, but it's yeah. it's different it, it's it, not... it comes in waves in my yeah. opinion because mm-hmm. you've got it at the beginning and you've kind of got it at the very end and that's in the middle there's a lot of stuff that happens in which more people that are uh, i'll just say the undersiders you know a more immediate cast of characters should be dying mm-hmm. especially when the promise is kind of a very gritty uh universe and mm-hmm. feels like a yeah. lot of people you get away with a lot of shit. Yeah. Um, and so when people complain about like, oh, you know, this is a realistic universe, I'm like, ah, but is it like and, and <laughs> especially when adapting, like uh we are trying to uh, we are trying to rhyme things and do poetry out of uh <laughs> out of a doctor's note. 
kind yeah. of <laughs> like you know we are narrativizing more stuff that's already narrativized enough that like like I said the undersiders <laughs> wait, all of them last way too long like yeah. that is a narrative choice that is made that is not realistic but uh, it w- works really good for the story because you want those characters to last and you like them and that's what draws you in. Um, and on top of that, like you got to make more changes if you're going to adapt it for other things because like it, you know, it works well. You can work things even better and more like I keep saying the word poetic and rhythmic because that's how I think when writing. Um, <laughs> but get things to work more like coincidentally kind of mm-hmm. you know the p- people's paths crossing conversations happening if you can plan that out ahead of time you can plan for those to cross or not cross way in advance um which wild bow had some time to do but you know now with retrospect we have a lot of time to do yeah um one of those is having moments where like clock blocker and taylor bump back and forth into each other over the years and now we here we are at the school potentially talking about, you know, uh, secret identities and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, this, this story is not realistic. No story is. Big realism is blown out of proportion. Uh, it's, it's, such a, it's such a buzzword. Re- in, real, in realism, if, if Worm was realistic, uh, Skitter goes and fights along in the very first episode and gets fried immediately. Yeah. Just fried to death. You blast yeah. her with fire, and she dies. That's <laughs> yeah. just how it... But <laughs> just so happens that, you know, wow, uh, the undersiders are there. Like, yeah. what a coincidence. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly. What a then, story-propelling coincidence. And then Lung kills all of them. That's why it's a story, not, you know... Exactly. Just, just a documentary of sadness. We don't really want sadness. realism. <laughs> we don't really want, well, actually, I'm going to stop here because Alan does want that slice of life. Uh, you know, we're all, they're just chilling on the bus. Just a YouTuber yeah. know, going throughout its day, but it's a just cartoon. Kidding. Just uh, just imagining a whole series of shorts of the Undersiders just like walking to and from all their different stops. And that's all it is. They got to like just trip over potholes and stuff. Yeah, it's it's a, it's the new reality show. It's produced by Leet. Like he actually finally did something right. Yeah, right. And, yeah. yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Hi, my name's Skitter, and welcome to my crib. Yeah. <laughs> well, it'll be a very interesting season to figure out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, as yeah. we read more, it'll become more clear. Probably. It'll be some fun challenges for sure. Yeah, uh, I, I really think. The big, you know, big thing here will be like building up a relationship with Theo. Uh, I think that mm-hmm. needs to get. I mean, uh, this. I mean, this is another two-part season. First part, you know, dealing with uh, essentially the PRT and being captured, mm-hmm. and the second part, uh, and and maybe we make that not even that long. But the second part being uh, Taylor working for the good guys. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds Those good. Are, there's, there'd be some fun ways to do it. I think that about does it, unless you have any other final thoughts. But uh, Man, this was a short chapter. Next, you know, uh, I got no real thoughts here other than the end of the episode is um, not... Um, the end of the episode is the one interlude with the guy trying to get all the interviews, except it's very quick it's very much like the montage at the end of the you know first episode to show where all of our characters are to set mm-hmm. up for the season. So you know the S nine looks at the TV, right? You know Shadowstalker looks at the TV, you know, and smashes it. We're literally cutting for like three seconds at a time, you know, yeah. as everybody yeah. stares, and then we cut back to uh, Taylor and then title. I do like that. Yeah. Hmm. Well, on that note, I think we'll go ahead and wrap this episode up. Uh, good, good conversation. Because I really want to read the next chapter, the next arc. <laughs> Ready to get into it. Uh, a lot of fun stuff. Didn't have too much to really talk about in this episode, but as always, of course, 
if you have any thoughts or uh, comments, please leave them at uh, any of our social media platforms, YouTube comments, Reddit, Instagram, etc. We're pretty much anywhere. Uh, and uh, I'll just throw this out there. Any qu- uh, quick question? Like, is there a time skip that you enjoy or uh, one yeah. that you don't enjoy? Let us know. I'm sure there's plenty I didn't even think about. Um, uh, House of the Dragon came to mind as well as we were thinking about them there. Forgot about the ones in House of the Dragon, which, again, I don't really care for, but that's another tangent. Let me know your thoughts. <laughs> uh, yeah. Give us, a, give, us a, give us some good and bad time skips. It'd be fun to read. And uh, mm-hmm. with that, stay tuned for Arc 21, both Brockton Bay Book Club coming out next, and then Dissecting Worm, of course, after that. It's going to be a fun few arcs for sure. And I think that's all the announcements. So uh, take that, uh, take that, you worms. Mm. Thank you so much for listening. Read along with us at parahumans.wordpress.com. We'd love to hear your thoughts. What did you love? What did you hate? Anything you think we missed, etc. as long as it's kind. If you'd like to get in touch, you can find us on Twitter, threads, Instagram, TikTok, and Reddit at Brockton Bay BC or click the link in the description.